Hello and welcome to a tour of Schneider Electric's EcoStructure Energy Hub solution. This solution is cloud hosted, meaning it gets updated with new features and functions regularly. It is cyber secure, meaning it is up to date with the best cyber security practices in the industry. It is modular, meaning it can be configured with specific functionality that a particular user may need and no more. It has many features to comply with relevant energy codes, analyze energy usage, benchmark your building performance, and monitor your electrical power infrastructure. Let's dive right in. Let's look at our sample facility, an engineering headquarters for a manufacturing company. This facility consists of corporate offices with many buildings and zones, and a manufacturing lab. The facility also has some secondary structures like a restaurant, security office, and parking. For facility manager Lucia, this is just one of many facilities that she manages. When Lucia first logs into the Energy Hub system, she can easily jump between the campuses that she manages. Once she gets to the particular campus she's interested in, she can also navigate the hierarchy within that campus. For example, she can jump straight to the lab in this particular headquarters and she can see a consistent user interface for each node that she clicks on. She can drill down further into specific processes or even specific pieces of equipment. Let's take a look at some of the energy views inside the Energy Hub software. When Lucia logs into the Energy One campus, she can quickly see an energy usage ranking widget which ranks the main consumers of energy in her facility. In this example, building E and heavy labs are the big consumers. You can also dive into a particular area and look at the constituent elements of energy usage within that building. As you can see then in the navigation here, we jumped straight to the node building E. You can always get back to the campus level by clicking on the campus node here and you get back to the energy usage ranking. Now you can also change different periods and see the same view for that period of time. So in this, in this example, even if we go to week, building E and heavy labs are still the big consumers in this facility. Another really important view is the energy by load type. And the reason this is important is that many electrical codes and energy codes require this data to be stored, collected, aggregated, and reported on. For example, ASHRAE 90.1 and California Title 24 are two important st national standards which require this data to be collected. As you can see, this view enables you to categorize energy usage by different typical categories like plug loads, lighting, HVAC, etc. You can also dive into particular categories that you're interested in and try and identify any anomalies. Of course, you can look at either usage or cost if you know the cost per kilowatt hour and, it, and you've entered it into the system. Additionally, you can report on this data by looking at the particular period you're interested in and you can also export the data for further analysis. Another interesting view is peak demand. So we can examine peak demand for the period of interest and we can identify what the individual elements that contribute to that demand. Some energy codes like California Title 24 also mandate the collection of peak demand data. So in this case, HVAC is a big culprit. So maybe we adjust the building schedule temperatures schedules a little bit to save some peak demand charges. You can also jump 
to various nodes in the hierarchy to see if there are any particular culprits to that peak demand. So we, for example, we can jump to the heavy lab to see if there were any kind of engineering loads at a particular time that made us hit a peak. Often in building campuses, an interesting number to look at is the energy intensity, meaning what is your energy consumption per square foot or square meter of area? So in our example here, you can see the average is about 14 kilowatt hours a square meter. We can also look at the maximum, which appears to be 17. And we it looks like between July 18th and July 20th, we hit that maximum energy intensity. You can also compare the energy intensity for say two different buildings. So for building E, let's say your average intensity is 28 kilowatt hours per meter square, whereas building I averages only 10, meaning building E is a much more energy intensive building. And there could be good reasons for this, or it could be an anomaly that is an opportunity to get you some energy savings. Regardless, energy intensity is a powerful metric measured by Energy Hub. Let's look at some of the capabilities in electrical distribution monitoring and alarming. In this view, you can see a summary of all the alarms of the campus and also a ranking of where these alarms are coming from. You can scroll through different alarms You can also drill into any particular alarm. So let's take this example. So in the switchboard 10 incomer, we see that the alarm is actually a circuit breaker close alarm and you, you have a time and date. You can acknowledge the alarm if you have the appropriate rights to do so. You can also jump straight into where the source of that alarm was. So you can see that the navigation just jumped to the source of that alarm, which is switchboard 10. And you have some basic measurements of that asset, which were last captured and some more details of the alarm. Now, this alarm can also be delivered in, in a text message or an email and it's also visible on the mobile app as well as in this inbox area of Energy Hub. Energy Hub also has the ability to represent electrical data in single line diagrams. You can see various electrical pieces of data on the equipment such as breaker status, current voltage, energy demand, etc. You can zoom in and out into the electrical system. You can also navigate the electrical system using the navigation pane in case you have a complex electrical system. Let's take a look at how Energy Hub is set up once you have your smart devices connected and communicating into the software. When we configure a site, we have access to these logical elements. So for example, in the energy view, we can have buildings, floors, areas, etc., And we can organize assets and meters within those logical elements. So in this example, you can see that building E has logical elements zone one, zone three, etc., And within that zone, we are totaling the energy from all these different devices. HVAC is categorized differently, as you can see, lighting is characterized dif differently. Now you can also drag and drop elements from the assets. So I can drag this and then categorize it in, in, in certain ways. So for example, if I'm trying to follow ASHRAE terminology, I can assign an energy usage uh, or 
California Rite Aid 24, I can organize it in that way. Um, you can drag and drop elements, you can have search for your assets, it's a very intuitive interface. You can also navigate of any changes you make in this hierarchy will be reflected in your energy dashboards immediately. So a very intuitive setup area and one that should be very accessible to most uh, application engineers and uh, folks trying to set this up. Well, that was a quick tour of EcoStructure Energy Hub software. As you saw, it's filled with useful features for energy code compliance, energy analysis, and power monitoring. Going forward, we will continue to add features and AI-based analytics to the EcoStructure Energy Hub offer. We look forward to sharing this exciting journey with you. Thanks for watching.